Arsenal suffered defeat at San Siro. An improved performance? I think so, but there are still some very clear issues with the way that we attack. As per usual, there's been an overreaction to the result and with Chelsea away to come this Sunday, there's no sign of it getting any easier. You're listening to the Chronicles of Aguna podcast. Let's get into it. Morning, everybody. How are you doing? Hope you're all good and uh, having a good Thursday so far. Coming to you from the city of Milan. I was hoping for a happier trip. It wasn't to be. Um, Disappointing result in the end. The San Siro experience is incredible. I have to say that. And if you get the opportunity to visit it, if you haven't done so already, you've got to, especially with all this talk about it being knocked down and taken away. It is genuinely um, one of football's most magical places. It's huge. It's bigger than it looks on TV, which often isn't the case with stadiums when you visit them. But this one is just something really, really special. I'll tell you what is a pain in the ass, though. Walking up those uh, famous towers to get up into the top tiers. Um, that's not thats not great. I needed a bit of time to recover from that walk, I've got to say. Maybe it's a, a sign telling me that I need to hit the gym a little bit more. I don't know. But anyway, um, amazing experience to be at San Siro. But obviously, that is overshadowed by a disappointing result more than the performance i know a lot of people have taken issue with the performance as well and i'm not saying that we don't deserve some criticism for the performance because i think a lot of the issues that have plagued us in recent weeks which is like an inability to actually create good chances an inability to break teams down an inability to um, turn our possession into something more. That was all on display again last night. Like nothing really changed in that sense. I thought some of the build-up play, some of the play leading up to um, where you're required to play the final pass or where you're required to get a shot off was better than it has been in recent weeks, but it's a small step forward and not a big enough one. And when you consider how precarious our situation looks with regards to the title race at the moment, with the fact that we go away to Chelsea on Sunday, with the fact that we could have done with some sort of result last night as far as the Champions League goes. You know, you you can understand why there is a lot of frustration out there and why there's a lot of Arsenal fans that are feeling down in the dumps and in some cases angry. I mean, I was more angry last night at some of the reaction to the performance than I was the performance itself. And that sounds a little bit weird because as a supporter, I think you should always try where possible and back your team i think there are scenarios and there are situations where it demands that you call the team out the manager out if you think that's who's responsible players out if you think they're the ones that have let the side down when you do this kind of work we're always looking to try and analyze and break things down as best as possible and we're always looking for a reason as to why we won or why we failed to win and the reason we failed to win last night was simple when we got into the final third after pulling into one way and the other when we got into certain areas our decision making at times for me was too slow Um, our decision making was at times wrong and we just seemed to lack as I keep saying that punch in the final third and it's really really disappointing but my anger last night was not at the players it wasn't at the manager it wasn't at even the result it was at some of the reaction because for weeks we've heard about Arsenal and the way they've been playing And there's been a demand for those performances to improve. And while it didn't improve enough last night, it did improve some. And you can't deny that in your analysis. Like You can't look at that and think that Arsenal deserved to leave San Siro last night empty-handed. Now, I'm not saying that they deserve to win the game, by the way. But I'm saying that they deserve to get at least a point. And you don't have to be perfect in football to get a point. Inter weren't perfect, yet they've got all three points, which is proof of the very point that I'm making. I put a a post out last night on social media, and if you are a patron, you can sign up via patreon.com forward slash the Chronicles of Aguna. Uh, If you'd like to support the podcast, support me to bring you this content on a daily basis, but also um, give yourself access to some more uh, of the content that we make on this podcast I put a post out saying we deserve to lose at Bournemouth and Newcastle, but not here. You would not believe the reaction I got to that. Um, And then I went on to post a little bit later on that there's plenty of fair criticism of Arsenal's display on here tonight, talking about X. But there's a genuine... um, uh, Sorry, I said there's a genuine cause for concern regarding the way we attack. But there's also a ton of nonsense 
from supporters who seem to revel in going completely overboard. It's a game of opinions, I suppose. And lots and lots of people have, have taken issue with that. They didn't like that. They they want to make the point that in their opinion, the performance was a disgrace, was completely unacceptable. And I'm sorry, I just don't see it like that. I don't see it as being that bad. I don't see it as having been um, that problematic of a performance. I think we were unlucky on the night. We didn't get the rub of the green. I also think that, you know, we could have done a lot more to, to ensure that we got what we deserved. But let's go from the very beginning of the game we'll, we'll break it down as best as possible let's kick off with the starting 11 that Mikel Arteta picked he went with Raya in goal White, Saliba, Gabriel and Timber across the back that's the defence I would have picked so no complaints there he went with Partey and Marino as the midfield two he went with Trossard playing in that advanced role again Saka from the right Martinelli from the left and Kai Havertz up front I was delighted to see Kai Havertz back up front because I think that's where he does his best work and although, again, we were missing something, we looked better for the fact, I thought, overall, that Kai Havertz was um, was back in that position. He seemed to string things together better. It meant that we could go long that little bit earlier if we needed to. Also, because Kai Havertz is such a big physical person, he can drift into areas and take people with him without even necessarily getting the ball. And we saw that on a couple of occasions in the first half. And I really do think that some of our best build-up play was when we just kept it simple. When we won the ball back and we just worked it out to the right or left, whether that be to Saka or Martinelli, nice and early. Football's a sport that sometimes I think we overcomplicate. I think we look at it sometimes and we think, you know, too intricately about the tactical side of things when actually... It can be as simple as getting the ball to your best players as early as possible and trusting in their individual ability to help create problems, to help create chances and hopefully score goals. But yeah, delighted to see Havertz back in the centre forward role, at least for the first half. Trossard in that role, just give up on it, Mikel. I, I don't understand why we're persisting with that. It's been clear that it's not working for a long, long time. He's going for his probably worst spell as an Arsenal player, Leandro Trossard. He's completely unsuited to that role. He's required to engage in physical duels in the middle of the park that he's just not built to deal with. Um, his passing isn't good enough, in my opinion, to be the guy that picks the ball up in that area to try and open defences, to try and unlock, you know, really stubborn back lines. I just don't see that as him. And when he's not ghosting in from a flank, he's not getting anywhere near as many goal scoring opportunities either. So... I'm really struggling with that. I don't think it's working. And I'm surprised, actually, that Mikel Arteta went with that in last night's game. Mikel Marino is the other one that I probably wouldn't have had in the team. Um, I'm really struggling with him at the minute. I'd prefer to see Jorginho starting in midfield. Um, and I'd prefer to see Nwaneri starting in that more advanced position ahead of Leandro Trossard, at least at the moment. That's what I wanted to see going into this game. We'll talk about the penalty incident in a minute because I feel like a lot of people are pointing the finger at Mikel Marino. And whilst I'm not completely um, on board with him at the minute and what he's bringing to the team, and I think it's questionable, and I think that you know we've got to ask some serious questions about the way he's being utilised. Um, yeah, I, I, I don't think uh, you can you can blame him for that at all. I thought the first ten minutes of the game. Um, were really, really shaky from us. I thought that uh, Inter came out with an intensity, Inter came out with an intent, and obviously the atmosphere in the stadium really, really helped them. Um, it was weird because, you know, sometimes you go to away European grounds and you're, you're in there from sort of like two hours before kickoff and you can feel the atmosphere building over a long period of time. You normally get the ultras in nice and early. That wasn't really the case at San Siro last night. It felt like the atmosphere was quite subdued, actually, until we got closer and closer to kickoff and just before the teams came out. That's when the stadium announcer and everybody else involved did their bit to kind of really get the crowd going and it really did help them. In the early stages of the game, they hit the crossbar early on. Chalanoglu had an effort from distance that was just wide of the post and I was worried at that point. I was fearing for where Arsenal were going. We know confidence is a little bit fragile at the moment. We know we're not... Um, in, in the same sort of zone as we've been maybe over the last year and a half. We haven't got that air of invincibility about us. We haven't got that, you know, that stability at the back that we've shown, um, which has been frustrating because everyone talks about the attack and the attack is a problem as well. But we've also started conceding a hell of a lot of goals, um, generally speaking, across the board in recent weeks, which certainly hasn't helped 
the fact that our attack is um, is misfiring as it is. But we started to grow into the game. We started to get a hold of the ball. We started to control possession. I thought, again, Thomas Partey was probably our best player on the pitch. Really calm, really assured in possession, pinging it right, pinging it left, really um, comfortable in everything that he did, really. And there were a few occasions, as I mentioned, where we worked the ball out to the wingers nice and early and we put them in situations where they could work crosses. Um, we didn't make enough of those situations in the end, but to generate those situations after a few weeks of failing to do so, generally speaking, was obviously a positive thing. So we're going into half time as the stronger side, in my opinion, and very much in the ascendancy. And then the penalty incident happens. And it's crazy harsh, that penalty, because there's really nothing that Mikel Marino can do about it. And, you know, I've said already that I'm not really having Mikel Marino at the moment. I'm not really on board with it. I don't really understand what he's added to the side. I don't really understand why he's in the side ahead of, as I keep talking about, Jorginho at this moment in time. But, um, you know, I can't blame him for that. I don't want to pin it on him. Um, I think it's incredibly unfortunate. And then when we went back and saw the incident between Somme and Marino at the other end of the pitch where the goalkeeper essentially comes out and punches the guy in the head to see that one of those penalty decisions was given and the other one wasn't was really frustrating and really difficult to take. Now, we were in a strange position last night, those of us that were at the game, because there were literally zero replays inside San Siro at any point in the game. So we got one look at everything and that was it. So my view and my opinion on things um, had to be just held a little bit. So if you listen to the post-match reaction, you'll understand why I was kind of non-committal on some of those talking points because I hadn't seen them well enough, closely enough. I couldn't tell you if they were penalties, if they weren't, but having watched it all back now, I think that we deserve to have a penalty. And I think the one that they got in the Premier League would never be given, but that's where we have the difference in the directive around the handball rule. Um and whilst I don't think it's a penalty in a million years, I think you, you kind of just got to accept that because at least within the UEFA competitions around that thing, they are consistent, whether you agree with it or not. Half time comes, Marino goes off, Jesus comes on, Havertz drops deeper. And I was frustrated when I saw that because, as I keep telling you, I really, really like seeing Kai Havertz in the centre forward position. I don't enjoy watching Kai Havertz playing in that advanced midfield role it just doesn't do it for me it doesn't work for me he's nowhere near as effective and we're in danger of sliding back into that territory where people start going oh you know Kai Havertz is not that good and he's not that effective no we've seen that if he's utilized in the right way and if he's played in the right role and in the right position he can be useful he can give us so so much so disappointed that he dropped a little bit deeper as the game went on he started to move in a more advanced position Jesus was drifting and he went into that area what I will say about Jesus just very very quickly is that I thought he looked sharper last night I thought he looked way better last night and again without packing that final punch as we keep saying it's the theme of the pod isn't it um today I, I think he looked better and that was encouraging to see if you, you're trying to take some positives from this one if you're trying to extract some positive things that's certainly one of the things that I would I would say um but the second half was a game of attack versus defence. It was Inter sitting deep with their three centre-halves, being quite happy actually for us to have the ball in certain areas in front of them and wide of them. And where I was frustrated was that other than crossing it into the box from either the corner of the area or the byline, we had no other ideas as to how to break them down. And that's an issue because... People will look at Inter and they'll say they were bad and they were just hanging on. No, they weren't. They they knew exactly what they were doing. They kept us at arm's length and they were very trusting in their ability to deal with those types of deliveries. Their centre-halves were eating them up all day and we failed to cause them any real problems as a result of that. You've got to remember as well, they made changes for this game. They've got a big game coming up against Napoli at the weekend and they made changes. Barella, Turam and DiMarco, who all would have started had this been at the top of um, Inzaghi's priority list, came off the bench. When they came off the bench, it gave uh, Inter the opportunity to restabilize a little bit when it looked like we were just getting on top of them a little bit too much for it to stay at 1-0. Inzaghi reacted, he was proactive, and he brought those guys on just to kind of give them a bit more fresh legs, another level, and that allowed them to see the game out in the end. 
But it was like we huffed and we puffed, but we just couldn't blow their house down. Sommer wasn't exactly making saves left, right and centre. So I do take issue with people that say we deserved all three points. Like that is not true. We, did we deserve a point? Yes, as I've already expressed, that's definitely my opinion. But we didn't deserve to win because I cannot sit in here right now thinking about it. Remember Jan Sommer having to make one single save of note. Like I don't remember him doing anything really other than receiving the ball back at his feet living dangerously a little bit which is what Jan Sommer does as a goalkeeper and then clearing his lines I don't remember him being worked I don't remember him ever being under any real extreme pressure um, so yes for all the possession for all the corners that we won we just didn't make enough of it and that's the reality of it so there is a frustration on my part there is a frustration um, on the part of a lot of Arsenal supporters I think today but I think it's really, really important that we we look at the game for what it was, which was a game in which Arsenal was sort of 70% of the way there. Like, so many aspects of our game were functioning in the way that we'd like them to. Defensively, generally, we were very good. Um, in the midfield, we controlled the game. We moved the ball left and right. But in that final third, again, we were lacking. And you do get to a point where as players, I think, this kind of stuff starts to get in your head. And you do start to overthink things. You know that time's running out. You know that you haven't really got in behind that many times. You know that you haven't really isolated the fullback that many times if you're a winger. And then you start to second guess the decisions that you make. Do you put it in the box early? Do you take an extra touch hoping that someone will peel off their man and create an angle for you? Do you cut it back to the edge of the box? Do you go alone? You end up overthinking the whole thing and the natural instinct that normally gets you through and that makes it so difficult for defenders to predict what you're going to do, it just disappears. And that's been the case for Arsenal now for a few games and that's why people are worried and that's why people are concerned. But based on last night's performance in isolation, I don't think we should be any more concerned than we were a couple of weeks ago when we lost at Bournemouth or at the weekend when we lost at Newcastle. I would say that the performance last night, given where we went, who we played against, this was better. This was a step in the right direction. We haven't taken enough steps in the right direction to get back to where we want to be. And I'm still extremely worried about the game coming up at Chelsea at the weekend. But this was a step in the right direction rather than another step backwards. And although that might not be something to celebrate, it's something that I think you should be at least content with. So... I'm in this weird position today where I feel like I'm having to bat off um, sort of the super negatives around um, this game. But equally, I share the concern and frustration of the, the majority who are sensible enough to know that even though um, there's still a lot more that we need to improve on, even though we didn't do enough to win the game, and even though um, those who made the trip out here especially will be really, really frustrated... It was better than what we've been watching. And that's the kind of line that I'm going to take away from this match. It is improvement, yes, enough, not quite. That's my kind of summary of this game um, as I sort of look back on it on Thursday morning. And, you know, let me know what you guys think in the comments. Of course, get involved, um, subscribe, like, all that wonderful stuff. And I've been slacking in saying that recently, but it really, really does help. Um, one other point I just wanted to make that I thought was quite funny was was Mikel Arteta going into the book for handling the ball on the pitch. <laughs> i got to admit, like, from where I was positioned, I thought the ball had gone out of play um, when he put his hand on it. And I was really annoyed at the time. I was saying, how can you give a free kick against the manager when the ball's already out? It's the most outrageous thing I've ever seen. But having seen the replays, I think that the officials were right uh, to caution Mikel for that. But, yeah, look... Um, don't really know what else to add i don't want it to be a repeat of the podcast that we've put out over the last few weeks you know no creativity going after individual players i don't think there's any need for that after what we saw last night because i thought generally we were better but there's still a long way to go and there's still a lot of improvement needed um another point of encouragement i guess was ethan waneri i thought he looked really sharp when he came on some really nice touches, the way he brings the ball in really close to him and spins and turns and makes it very, very difficult for you to dispossess him without essentially going through him 
is why he's a real talent and why he's a really good player. And he was desperately trying to force something at the end, wasn't he, when he sort of made the space and, and fired over the top of the crossbar. I thought there were a few players last night that battled really well. I thought Gabriel Jesus battled really well when he came onto the pitch. I thought Kai Havertz battled well throughout as he does. I thought Saka probably could have done with the ball a little bit earlier again, as I keep saying. And I think that makes a lot of difference to how effective or ineffective Bukayo Saka is in these types of games. Partey was my man in the match, though. I thought he was outstanding. Gabriel and Saliba were good too. Um, Saliba got caught out once, I felt, in the first half where he stepped up too high, but generally was good. White, solid. Timber, solid. Um, Raya didn't have anything to do, which is why it's impossible to be too down in the dumps, I think, about what we saw yesterday. But, yeah, improvement is needed. And maybe improvement isn't always going to be from A to D. A to D you know sometimes you got to go through phases B and C and it felt like this was a, a step in the right direction albeit not good enough overall for what we were looking for I would have been delighted with a draw here um, and so if you go into a game feeling that way delighted with the draw here get, and, and not because I don't think we're as good as Inter or we're better than Inter like generally speaking in the grand scheme of things in the bigger picture but because I'm well aware of the form that we were going into this game with. I'm well aware of the fact that we're not in a good place right now and we are trying to recover from two defeats in three games, which is not something we've had to deal with too many times in the last couple of years with this team, with this manager, because we've been really, really good generally. And we've fallen off a little bit at the moment. There's all this talk around whether or not we can make a title challenge of it. There's all this talk around whether or not we've got the credentials to go further in the Champions League. There's lots of questions being asked about individuals, some of the summer signings, whether we got that stuff right. When you go into a game with all that noise around you, it can be difficult. And I thought that after a shaky 10 minutes, we managed to put all of that crap to one side and start slowly to impose ourselves on a game. The problem was we never had that knockout blow. And it's like, if you go back to the North London derby, I remember I said a line on the, the post-match pod where I said something along the lines of Tottenham had loads of the ball, had loads of opportunity to create chances, but they didn't have that knockout blow. And at points, we might have been up against the ropes, but if you don't have that power to land the knockout blow, then we will hit you. Or at least during that period of time, we were ready to hit you back and we were ready to make the most of the fact that teams were failing to put us away, even when we had to adjust our game, go into a more defensive mode, etc., etc. So, yeah, we're in a difficult spot at the moment, but I think there were some signs of improvement. I completely acknowledge that we need to get better. I completely acknowledge that we need to do more, but I feel better about the team today than I did two days ago. And so maybe we are slowly but surely moving in the right direction i don't know let's try and end on a bit of positivity don't forget to leave a like on the video if you're watching us on youtube subscribe to the channel as well if you're brand new check us out on patreon um you can support us over there and get access to extra content like the match day reaction piece that was with you late last night after the defeat here in milan um yeah subscribe all the rest of it leave us a review for listening on audio as well and I will see you all on the next one where we'll begin our focus um, on that game at Stamford Bridge against Chelsea at the weekend. Thanks for joining me. I'll see you all on the next one. Goodbye.